Two gemologists sat in the basement of a world-renowned jewelry store in London. A woman named Anna examined millions of dollars worth of diamonds on behalf of some wealthy Russian benefactors. She completed her review and confirmed they were the real deal. Then she locked the diamonds in a padlock box and left the store until the buyers could send the cash. The next day, the staff discovered the diamonds had been switched for fakes. Instead of million dollar gems, they found everyday garden pebbles you could pick up from the streets. In March of 2016, a sweet 60 year old grandma carried out the largest shoplifting crime in British history, totaling 4.2 million pounds worth of stolen diamonds. So how did this gray haired granny swindle millions of dollars in diamonds from professional jewelry executives? Lulu Lakatos is a Romanian-born woman from St. Bruce, France, who lived in a commune with her husband and sister, Liliana. However, these sisters fell on hard times, but instead of walking the straight and narrow, they opted to follow a life of crime. The sisters racked up a slew of theft charges by 2002. When it came time to steal the precious diamonds in 2016, Liliana was wanted in Switzerland for a string of fraud charges. Meanwhile, Lulu was a known thief in France. Liliana's most egregious Swiss crime paralleled the one that would later land her sister in prison. She tried her hand at swindling 400,000 euros, and successfully. She walked into a Swiss bank and using sleight of hand techniques, swapped a bank envelope full of euros for one filled with worthless paper, a classic switcheroo. Liliana waited for the bank executive to be distracted by a phone call before making the swap and leaving the bank. The police never charged Liliana with the crime for some reason, even though they knew it was her. Perhaps the success of this scheme pushed the girls towards their next big feat. Because these two were pulling off some seriously high skill crimes, you'd assume they weren't acting alone, and they weren't. In fact, they had a gang of little helpers to aid them in their plans. And for their next big act, the crew zeroed in on a shiny multi-million dollar target, Boodle, a jewelry store in London. With their eyes on a much larger prize, one of Lulu's thieving pals contacted the store's owner, Nicholas Wainwright, under the fake name of Simon Glass. He told Wainwright that he was a spokesperson for some wealthy Russian investors interested in purchasing several high value diamonds. Over the phone, they arranged a face-to-face -face meeting where they convinced Wainwright to fly out to Monaco to discuss the specifics of this transaction. Although Wainwright didn't do business this way, this Simon Glass character floated a higher price than the diamonds were actually worth. With that kind of money on the table, Wainwright obliged. A source with knowledge of the case said Wainwright thought these strange Russian men were simply uneducated in the jewelry world and had more money than sense. Perhaps Wainwright was so blinded by their offer that he missed all the red flags. Red flag number one, wealthy Russian investor. Wainwright touched down in Monaco and met Mr. Glass for lunch. After some tough negotiations, they reached a deal for seven hand-picked diamonds, one of which was worth $2.2 million. The stipulation was that the Russians would send their own gemologist to inspect the quality of the diamonds prior to purchase. Once she verified their authenticity, then the multi-million dollar wire would go through and the diamonds would be turned over for sale. Wainwright agreed to their specifications. Several days later, Lulu walked into the store posing as the Russians' hired gemologist. She met with Mr. Wainwright and the store's own gemologist, Emma Bar. Martin. However, Lulu introduced herself as Anna. She entered the store wearing a camel coat, low tip designer hat, thick frame glasses, and a pink silk scarf. She removed her coat to reveal a low cut black dress that, according to store associates, made her look like a Russian dancer. Perhaps she was after a certain allure by dressing this way. Wainwright described it as unattractive, tawdry, and homely. It was distracting, if anything, which was Lulu's plan all along. Mr. Wainwright and Emma led Lulu down a glass staircase leading to the basement vault. There, she was presented with the previously selected diamonds to verify for quality. She weighed the stones and inspected them under an ultraviolet light before wrapping each stone in tissue paper. She then placed them into a bag and then into another box. Boodles would keep that box under lock and key until the transaction was complete. Mr. Wainwright watched Lulu like a hawk until he received a perfectly timed phone call from the mysterious Russian investors. He noticed some suspicious behaviors from Lulu at this point, like the fact that she didn't use an eyeglass to inspect the stones, a typical tool for 
any gemologist. Nonetheless, he walked away to take the call. As soon as Mr. Wainwright was out of sight, Lulu took the zip bag of diamonds and placed it in her purse. Emma sprang into action, saying how she needed to see the diamonds at all times. She couldn't believe she had to ask Lulu to please take them out of her purse. In a broken English accent, Lulu assured Emma that there was nothing to worry about. She was sorry and blamed the language barrier for the confusion. She took the bag out of her purse and placed it back on the table. Emma promptly picked up the bag and returned the diamonds to the safe. When Mr. Wainwright returned from his phone call, Emma Barton immediately told him about what had happened, and he searched Lulu's purse. However, he didn't find anything. Little did he know, Lulu had a concealed pocket inside her purse where she hid the decoy bag and performed the swap. Mr. Wainwright agreed with Lulu, chalking it up to miscommunication. Now in the clear, Lulu left the store with 4.2 million pounds worth of diamonds in her purse. CCTV footage showed Lulu leaving the store and meeting with two female accomplices walking alongside her on the street. She discreetly dropped the bag of diamonds into one of the girls' shopping bags as they walked. Then, she turned into a nearby pub where she stopped inside for a cold one. Here, she met another member of her con artist gang named Georgetta Daniela, who brought her a change of clothes in the bathroom. After the pub, the two caught a train to Paris. The two women who now had the diamonds in their shopping bags met with two more male helpers named Stankovic and Jovanovic. The men caught their own taxis bound for East London. Three hours after committing the crime, Lulu was out of the country. Within 24 hours, she'd come in, committed the crime, and left. The following day, Emma couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right about the mysterious gemologist named Anna. So she decided to x-ray the padlock box of diamonds just to be sure. The x-ray confirmed her suspicions. They opened the vault, removed the bag, and checked inside. They were horrified when they discovered seven worthless pebbles similar in size to the diamonds. Police tracked down Stankovic and Jovanovic by the ID number on their taxi. However, it's unclear what eventually led them to Lulu. They made off with the diamonds in 2016, and the two men were arrested arrested shortly after. However, Lulu remained at large until 2021. Did Stankovic and Jovanovic talk? Did the police find enough evidence? Nobody can say for sure. After her arrest, Lulu was extradited to the UK to stand trial. In a shocking twist, Lulu claimed her sister, Liliana, committed the crime. Here's the catch. Liliana passed away in 2019 after a car accident. According to Lulu, Liliana admitted that she was the fake gemologist months before her accident. As the story goes, Liliana stole Lulu's passport, traveled to the UK and swipe the diamonds. She even took steps to age her appearance to look more like Lulu, who is nine years older than her. Lulu was upset when Liliana came clean. However, she didn't have time to be angry as she dealt with her husband's prostate cancer. She accepted her sister's promise to make it up to her and turn herself in. Police recovered mixed DNA samples from the garden stones left in place of the diamonds. They also lifted fingerprints from the glass table in the basement showroom. However, the prints didn't match Lulu's, and the DNA results from the stones came back as inconclusive. The prosecution relied heavily on the CCTV footage and Emma's testimony, where she picked Lulu from a lineup and identified her as the culprit. Emma also brought up how Lulu didn't use an eyeglass and how suspicious that was. As for the equipment she did have, she didn't seem to know how to use it. She used her ultraviolet light under the standard shop lights, which a gemologist would never do. Ultraviolet needs to be in a dark room to work properly. The prosecutor, Philip Stott, had a different theory that contradicted Lulu's claim of identity theft. He believed Lulu took advantage of Liliana's death, pinning the crime on her knowing she couldn't defend herself. Perhaps to seek sympathy from the jury, Lulu fired back. In her eyes, Liliana would be there if she was still alive, confessing to the crimes and accepting her punishment. You can always come back from jail, but you can't come back from death. Maybe this tactic actually worked. Lulu was only sentenced to five and a half years in prison in order to pay back 250 pounds of the 4.2 million pounds she stole. Meanwhile, Stankovic and Jovanovic pled guilty and were sentenced to three years and eight months. After telling the jury that she had no idea she was even involved in a crime, Danila was acquitted. As for the diamonds, nobody's seen them since. Detectives suspect that one of the stones may have turned up at a Belgian jewelry store in 2017, but couldn't prove anything when the paperwork didn't match. Every report about the case drew the same comparison between Lulu's diamond heist and Ocean's Eleven. They committed brazen theft in plain view of trained staff. They used sleight of hand techniques and careful planning to get in and out before anyone ever noticed. They swapped the diamonds like Indiana Jones and rode off into the sunset like Frank Ocean himself. In the end, Boodles was out millions of dollars. 
millions Lulu probably stashed away on a tropical island. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section whether or not you think there's a difference between natural diamonds and lab-made diamonds.